I can hear you absolutely perfectly, which is great. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so it's Felicity from Get Your Rock Out, and I'm here chatting to Pete from Shoshin. How are you doing today? Not too bad at all, Felicity, thanks. Good, I'm very glad. And it is, of course, Bank Holiday Monday, so have you had a good one? Have you actually managed to relax? Yeah, yeah I've been really lazy. Oh, nice. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> yeah. So brilliant. I mean, I guess it must be like a really exciting um, kind of time for you guys at the moment, because you've got your new release coming out very, very soon. And so why don't you tell us a bit about that? Well, it's actually today. Is it today? Oh, that's so exciting. How have you had a lazy day? Well, because well, I have. <laughs> I, just came up, I came up, I mean, I'm not in the shop selling them. No, you know, that of course is true. Giving them out. So it's, it's, you know, I have the shops not open anyway, so lucky for me, uh, it's, it's, that's the easy part of the job, really, because I'm not on the retail end. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I, I did my job last year. Uh, well, not really. I'm still doing the promo, but yeah, we um, we just got back from Germany recently, so um, it was a bit of a hectic tour for three weeks, and um, basically I've got loads of stuff to do, like I've got guitars to repair, speakers to replace, all kinds of stuff like that, but I, I didn't do any of it today, it was just chilling. <laughs> you know what, I think that's a good call. I think you definitely made the right decision there. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Definitely. So yeah, I mean, there seems to have been like a, a really, really, really good response so far. I know XFM have picked up on your latest single, which is yeah. just, I mean, it's just brilliant. Did you did you think that that kind of stuff was in the pipeline? Um, plan C. Uh, uh, no, actually, actually, I I thought that uh, another song we had called Same to Me was really, really strong. And when I w wrote Plan C, I, I wasn't. That, oh, this is amazing. I just thought, oh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, but it actually, yeah, it's one of those songs where you don't try too hard and it ends up a lot better than you thought it was going to be. So I actually remember the band when I showed them, saying, hey, this could be a single. And I remember thinking, nah. But then that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's been picked up by XFM and Planet Rock are playing it almost every weekend. So, oh, good grief, yeah, that's amazing. It's pretty cool. That's absolutely amazing. And like, how are you feeling about the new release so far? Like, are you kind of feeling a bit twitchy because it's release day, or are you actually just really, really, really confident in it and really happy with it? I'm really, I'm really confident in it. Not all the reviews are positive. I, I don't think all, all the reviewers are really totally understanding the band. Some of them. Are, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it, obviously, you've got artists who are always going to whinge about that sort of thing. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it was really nice this week. We got a review in where some somebody basically noticed how versatile the band is, and that's something that really doesn't get picked up on if you if you're familiar with the record. So it's, that yes. it can go from the extreme of same to me to the extreme of Last Brick and Stone and sound like the exact same band. Um, I, I think it's an achievement. For so that, for some reason, not a lot of people notice, but <laughs> they just kind of take it for granted. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh -huh. it's it's really interesting. I think people always manage to pick up something completely and utterly different. Like every time they hear a record, like everyone takes something so 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 um, differently from it, and it's yeah, yeah. it's it's, yeah. A, it's fascinating. Yeah, you're not kidding. I mean, it, you get one person going, "Wow, this this record's wonderfully, you know, coherent," and then the next guy will be like, "Oh, it's a bit repetitive," you know, and they both mean the same thing. You know, you have one guy going, "Oh, this is really really." Very, this is great, and then you'll have the next guy going, it needs more focus. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's interesting like that, because I, I don't think that Shoshin are a very um, generic band, to be honest. I mean, everyone's always trying to put us in a, in a, in a category, which is, you know, you have to do, because people need some frame of reference when you're writing about them, because, yes. um, you know, words don't sound like music, do they? So you've got to try to get close to the music, with music people already know, I understand that. But, but I, it's, it's, I think with a band like you guys, I mean, it's really, really difficult to do. You know, you kind of, you, you take the obvious influences and people tend to be like, yeah, this is, this is the one. Um, but then yeah. actually, it's it's totally it's totally different, and they miss so many of the subtleties because they're trying to focus on on one thing. They really do. I mean, the one thing I haven't had anybody noticed yet is that I don't play power chords or anything like that anywhere on the entire record, and it's a rock record, and it has no power chords on it at all. It's all of arpeggios and stuff. <laughs> Nobody's noticed. No <laughs> way. No, I can safely no. say I'm sad 
have to have missed that completely. But no, no, wow. no. I guess it might, it might be a bit of a musical thing. Well, yeah. I think most records have got like, um, like you know, rock records in particular are based on those kind of big power chords and whatever. And one of the reasons why I made up the Shoshin sound was I kind of wanted to break away from that. And uh, but you still have to make it rock. Oh yeah, <laughs> Maybe absolutely. Maybe they just notice it rocks. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> that's you know what that's a nice way of, a nice way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's the case. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. Um, and when it comes to the political side of things, I mean, mm. how do, does it? I know that you you do absolutely want to want people to pick up on that side of it, but do you sometimes get annoyed and think that some people don't? focus on the rest of it because they're like oh yeah they're just a political band and that's it it's an odd situation really i mean you, you've got to write about what affects you you've got to write about yeah what's getting on your nerves or whatever or, or what's making you happy you've really got to respond to what you're feeling otherwise it's going to be fake isn't it completely never, yeah. never a good start so um i think on our last album it was all some of it was a bit you know you know there wasn't really much depth to the lyrics but once the band's matured a bit this time, um, I've been a bit more fearless just about approaching certain subjects. And it's, 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 um, it's a, uh, what's a conflicting feeling when you're doing that. You feel great because you're expressing yourself. And then sometimes you're like, oh my God, this is going to get me absolutely nowhere. <laughs> you know, people are just, you know, you do, as soon as you start talking about certain subjects, doors close. It's yeah. just a fact. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just a fact. But in the same time, you know, that if 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 you've got an awareness of something and you need to express it, then you just have to. And, um, it's yeah, it's just the way it is. I mean, we're aware sometimes. That, you know, we've really nailed it with the subject. But we know that you know the mainstream are really going to have. <laughs> struggle to swallow it never mind regurgitate it yeah, so, uh, yeah. Um, it's it's like that really i mean it's like i, I write songs that are political but i write songs that are and uh, they're, they're often more it's more fun to do that because you can be cheeky and you, you know you feel like you're throwing some rocks at the <laughs> in authority or <laughs> definitely but, uh, you know uh yeah you also kind of know like oh this this isn't going to help us <laughs> But that's not what it's about, really, you know. And uh, I, I can imagine uh, the management and the label every time they get a demo of one of them kind of songs going, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, no, it's, it's good, though. And I think it's, I think it's so, so, so important to, to kind of stick through to, to what you genuinely think and feel. But why, I mean, why is it that this time you were more fearless with that? What was it about this record that made you think, actually, I'm just going to go all out with this? I don't think it's, I, I kind of sat down and, and made a little list of things I was going to do with the album. I think just the, the part of it is the person I changed into, or maybe I was more upfront about being who I am or whatever in the songs. But I think certain things, you know, when you're reading the papers or reading whatever, would strike me and and it would get something going in my mind and like was saying to me, I write about write about it. And uh, to be honest, that all for us very overtly political something like Stint to me for me is, is not really political it's humanistic and it's, it's common sense and people call it political because that's the easiest way of categorizing but it really isn't what the whole song is is really about just kind of stepping away from the politics and the religion and all the other um you know ideologies yeah that make people be separate and just kind of breaking that down and, uh, you know, I'm just having a bit of fun with it because in that song, I can see the biggest problem is the way I saw it when I wrote this. And I wrote this song before, you know, ISIS and G3 Charlie and all, everything started kicking off, or even before the rise of UKIP. Because actually, if you listen in the song, SABMP, and they're, they're fucking dead and gone. Yeah, they are actually, <laughs> they aren't they? they? What actually happened yeah. to them? And, uh, yeah, I mean, I wrote it and it was more like what I was dealing with wasn't really like. I wasn't really taking on racism. What I was really doing was I was taking on people who were a little bit fearful and a little bit territorial because they're not like intrinsically feeling.
feeling that they're genetically or culturally superior, they're just feeling a little bit encroached upon. And what I was trying to do was break down that illusion so that they, you know, disperse the fear a little bit. And then you have some people who won't go over to UKIP's side or won't go over to the BNP side. And that's really what the song was trying to do, you know. And it was trying to, like, you know, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But, you know, instead of being like Billy Bragg <laughs> and going, racism is bad <laughs> you know, for three minutes, because it obviously is. What I'm trying to really address more than racism is sort yeah. of territorialism and just try and point out how ridiculous that is and, and just try and pull that down a little bit so, you know, that it, it doesn't have as, as solid of as a ground to stand on as an idea in, pe- in some people's minds. So those people flip-flop in the middle, flop the right way. That's what the song was supposed to do. But then, of course, you know, uh, ISIS fucking came out with their album yeah. first, didn't they? <laughs> they made people more extreme, so I, I don't know how much good the song's done. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think with everything like this, um, it's, it's really, really difficult because, you know, you kind of look at the world and you're just like shit it's it's all completely pointless trying to do anything differently but at the same time i think that as long as there are still people who are actually doing things like that then it gives people hope and i think that that's the most important thing of all really i think i completely agree yeah i I think good stuff like that with ideas that people can identify with on a fundamental level makes everybody feel just a little bit less alone and a little bit confident, more confident about themselves, and that's like the first purpose of, of any art, really. So yeah, you, you've got to you've got to do it like that. Definitely, no, I would I would agree, and it's it is it's really really refreshing for me that that you know there are still bands that that actually do that, but actually genuinely mean it as well. I think so many have kind of jumped on the bandwagon lately and be like, oh, we're gonna do this and this, when you know that they literally could not care less about it. They're just attempting to. Yeah. Do something slightly controversial. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. I definitely, I definitely wasn't trying to do that. I mean, it, it just that, that song was, in particular was just a weird thing that just came out of me. All the crazy stuff in it, you know. I remember all the conversations with the label. They'd be like, "Oh, you, got, you can't have God swearing," and I'd be like, "Yeah, but the whole thing's a dream anyway." In the song, you know. So, so it's a weird song. It works on lots of levels, and it's very. I don't know, I, I don't, it's not contrived at all, you know, it's uh, just, it, it is what it is, it just came out, and uh, yeah, I'm proud of it. Good, well, I'm, I'm really, really glad, and I'm, gl- I'm also really glad that, you know, you didn't kind of get it out and then think, oh, actually, I'm regretting doing that, or I'm sad that I did this this way, or anything like that. No, no, I did, yeah, not at all. I mean, you, you can't, you can't censor yourself, really, you've just got to stand by it, you know, and uh, probably if you're saying something that's making some people uncomfortable, you're probably saying the right thing. <laughs> you know what, yeah. I think you're very, very right on that, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's great, and like, what, what are your plans with this now? Like, what have you got coming up and going on, and what are you doing on the back of this? Because I know you've got a few festivals that are happening, and what else? Well, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of festivals happening, but um, the the band itself is, is always had like a really really strong work ethic, and um, in in that regard, we've often been misunderstood. Um, but I'll come back to that. But basically, what what we're doing is we're supporting all our festival appearances with road shows oh, and gorilla shows fantastic. and all kinds of stuff all over Europe. And yeah, that's basically what's going on at the moment you know because um we probably most we probably would be on like support tours or things like that but it just it just transpires that they're not really happening to lot so for this summer we've got lots of festivals to do uh, mainly in you know czech republic germany stuff like that really and yeah. yeah and we just got a, a basically a ton of promoting to do and that's basically what we've always done. That's how we ever got anywhere in the first place. Because yeah. we're from we're yeah. from Manchester, and there's rap in our music, and, and <laughs> I think that, I think Mancunians there are they are responsive to rap, but the Mancunian rock underground isn't is not anything. And, yeah. and if you want if you want proof, look at poor old Dirty North, who one of the best rap rock outfits ever to be seen in England and you know they they even have the endorsement of the Stone Roses and you know the poor guys can't draw flags 
you know, well, they probably, oh, I think they split up now, actually, but they were a really good band, and they had uh, everything behind them, moving it forward, and they, uh, yeah, it just doesn't seem to work like that in Manchester. We it's, never bothered with it, we just yeah. got the hell out of it. Yeah, well, absolutely, I'm, I'm from there, I totally agree with all of that. It's, it's weird, like, the Manchester music scene, I don't quite understand that it's, it's just an odd scene to be part of. Really Absolutely. odd. Doesn't Absolutely. work like anywhere else in the country. No, no. The best thing about Man- Mancunian bands, the best Mancunian bands, all are all a bit weird. Like Joy Division or whatever. They, they're a bit weird. Nobody sounds like them. So in that sense, I think that Shoshin are the ultimate Mancunian band because we're weird, we've got a weird sound and nobody sounds like Shoshin. It's just the True. sound we have. And in that sense, we're firmly in the tradition of Manchester groups. Um, but yeah, it, it, in terms of getting 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 a captivated Mancunian audience, well, that's that's a difficult thing to pull off. And like you said, it is a bit of an odd scene. <laughs> and there's yes. different cliques, and there's different, you know, uh, stratas of you know. <laughs> Uh, social circles and it's uh, yes. it's bizarre one, you know um, but we we always sounded a little bit too transatlantic I think <laughs> that's probably the best way of putting it it sounds really really lame doesn't it to say transatlantic but I think that's what it is because uh, but in my defense Dirty North who I talked about before are way more colloquial than us you know they Dirty North for heaven's sake yes. you know yeah. And they, they, they rapped in really, really heavy Mancunian accents and it didn't do them no good. So, um, oh, I hope it will one day. I don't want to talk about them like they're dead and buried because they've got a lot of talent in those guys and I hope they'll come back and just smash it. No, I, you know, I, I, hope, I hope that you're right and I really hope that, I don't know, I hope Manchester has some huge kind of cultural revival at some point soon because it's got such potential but it just never quite seems to realise it. Yeah. I think what what's happening at the moment is that the, the youth, that's where the energy's always at, are all, they're big on their EDM, you know, and the EDM is huge in Manchester, and that's kind of where the student student crowd is getting drawn to, yeah. so rock is underground, 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 it's underground times three in, in Manchester, and you know, it, it's you've got a lot of venues closing down. Yeah. All the venues, yeah, a lot of bands actually. Skip in Manchester on their top block yeah, as well, which is coast. really bizarre. It, yeah, because it used, used to be the rock capital of the north. I mean, they took that off Liverpool, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and it's it kind of really, it went, it went away, didn't it? It went up to over the Pennines, and it uh, probably still is there. <laughs> but, um, yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, wow, we, we seem to have got maybe slightly distracted, but it's really, really nice to hear that I'm not the only person that thinks the same about Manchester's music scene. Yeah, I, again, I think it's just disjointed. I think the scene is you need more than a couple of good groups. You need a whole bunch of them, and that's just some special shit that happens once a decade yeah. in any given city. So uh, it can't always happen in the same city all the time. Yeah, kind of no, it's weird, true. So. It's very, very true. Very true. And so, yeah, so basically I'm guessing that the summer for you is just touring, and touring and touring and touring, which is really, really exciting. Mm-hmm. Like, really exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, we've made the best record that we've ever made, um, and it's out now, which is a great relief. I mean, uh, it's three years between one record and the next, and <laughs> uh, I know, it's, it, the, th- the thing is, it was finished in February in 2014, it was but well, it was being fully recorded by then and it, it was mixed by summer but we've had to wait a year because that's how the industry works at the moment it's queuing things up oh yeah but to, to, yeah to actually be out and it's just a great feeling to have it out because i feel like now the real work can begin you know because we everywhere we was going for the last year or two whenever we did a show if people looked us up they'd be looking up out of date stuff and we really, really have advanced a lot from, from one record to the next. So it's kind of like what people are seeing uh, in the shop window isn't what they're getting in the package when they get it home, you know. So I'm really glad things are up to date now. Definitely. And, uh, we can start planting proper seeds. Definitely. And, like, it's when it comes to kind of the, if you've had it kind of written for that long, have you already started writing for the new one? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. fantastic you, news. <laughs> you've always got to be ahead, haven't you, by a year or two. And we, you know, we've got to, 
the new songs are coming through and it, you got a little bit of the same situation when we're playing shows and you're getting the biggest shouts for some of the newer songs oh, and it's brilliant. like I don't know if they've been played with more venom or if I'm, or if I'm getting better hopefully getting better as a writer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no I think to be honest I think no matter what anybody else says when you feel in yourself that it's the best thing that you've mm -hmm. done then you're absolutely right yeah yeah, well, I think so. I mean, as long as you're not, like, a complete narcissist, then you're probably correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. If you're a complete narcissist, that kind of kind of fails, really, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so brilliant. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. It has been an enormous pleasure. It's really, really nice to be able to catch up. Yeah, yeah, okay, no problem. Sorry um, for rambling. No, no, not at all. I love it. I love interviews like this. I mean, it's not, there's literally nothing more boring to me than speaking to people who give, like, two word answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't really like favourite colour interviews either, so <laughs> it's been cool for me too. Well, I'm very glad, and now, just to finish, what's your fit? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, brilliant, well, thank you. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll see you around at some point soon on the scene. I hope so too.